Hello, welcome, hi. If you're new here, hi, my name is Crystal. I go by Plants with Crystal on all social media platforms. And today I was just gonna sit down and show you some of my favorite plants. I wanna start doing maybe some like monthly favorites. That way it kind of holds me accountable to at least say, hey, I can get these videos out one time a month and share some more of my collection. Um, I have not done a plant tour yet. That feels very overwhelming to me because I do have so many plants. So let's just start with adding in some of the favorites. Now some of these I've had, they're rescues, some of them are new ones, and some of them I just, they've been catching my eye more lately over the last month. So let's just get right into it. Let me show you what I got. So the first one is this plant, I actually um, was gifted this plant to rescue it. So I've shown the process of how I went about rescuing this one. And this is kind of the update of what it looks like now. I'm really excited. So this is a ZZ Sinzi, but they are known to be slower growing. And so the fact that it has grown so much already in the last like month and a half, it's super exciting. When you think of a ZZ, you think of longer stalks or longer leaves. These are smaller forms, so they actually grow super small. So the leaves grow very compact and tiny, which I love. This is actually the only ZZ Cincy that I have. So I'm very proud of this baby. I didn't think that she wasn't gonna make it. I saw some good rhizomes. I saw some good roots. She had some green left on the tiny bit of stems that she had. And here she is. So super pumped about that one. He's going to come and bring his hot dog, which makes sounds because that's just what happens when I film. Are you good? This next one is a gift from my friend Jackie. My friend Jackie is a plant seller. She actually gifted me one of my wishlist plants and it's a strawberry shake. I call it the shake. This has been a plant that I have had on my list since 2020, but they're expensive. They're expensive and I am pretty frugal when it comes to plant shopping and purchases. And so this one still is a plant that's pretty high in price. Um, so I was really excited to get this one, but it has some beautiful variegation. So you see the kind of like the white and the yellow, and it is currently in my little humidity dome. I just keep it, I just keep it under these domes. I have a few of these domes, especially for any plants that require a little bit higher humidity or that I'm kind of transitioning. So um, I have it over and I just keep it on the shelf with the lip uh, hanging off the edge a bit so it could get some humidity but not completely shut and it's been doing well i have a new growth happening right here and so we're we're on oh, some more right here another growth point happening right there so yeah i'm happy to have the shaky in my collection my biggest recommendation too if you're trying to get into having a little bit of the, I call it the fancy plants or the more rare. I I can go on a tangent about it, but really it's just plants that are harder to find in your area. Um, I would always recommend waiting. Prices have been changing significantly. I can think of the Thai constellation, for example, as a plant that was wildly expensive and so they're starting to come down in price and now you're getting sellers that are doing smaller Thai constellations for anywhere from 40 to 80 bucks so compared to the price that it was before that's great what I'm saying is be patient if there's a plant that you have on your wish list that's uh, on your wish list because it's a little bit more expensive just wait it out um, or you may see eventually that you can swap or do something like that so that's the shake. Next are my Welfin Sansevieria, which was recently reclassified to the Mansonio, what was it? Masoniana, Masniana, Masiniana. I kind of don't like when they do that because I have to relearn the names. I had purchased these individually through the years and 
they just weren't doing anything for me. So I decided, I think it was last year to put them all together. And the, the larger that they grow, the better it looks. Uh, I have to uh, water them thoroughly right now. You see how they start to fold like this? That's a good indicator once the soil is completely dry and then they fold, that's a good indicator that they need watering. But I love that they're in their family. It makes me really excited to see them growing all together and they're just happy and they're beautiful. And yeah, I've been really big on combining plants as well. These pots from Walmart are, they have me by a chokehold, I swear. But this white one, I believe is still available. The green one that I'll show you right now, that one is also from Walmart and it's, that one is sold out, but it's so pretty. And so I just love to put them all together, especially when I'm feeling overwhelmed or I'm like, this just doesn't spark me any joy anymore. Let me put them all in one spot and it just judges them up. It judges them up. If there's a plant that you're like, you you just don't do it for me anymore, try and put multiples together and they look so luscious and it makes a huge difference. This next one is the Philodendron Painted Lady. This lady is large. This lady grew fast and this lady is going to give me more work right now. And so I was not prepared to have to put her in a support pole so quickly but my goodness gracious, she just, she's perfect. Her leaves grow out to be this yellow and it almost looks like the leaf is dying, but as it grows larger, it then transitions into this gradient green yellow. And then as it matures more, that leaf then turns green. It's so pretty. Um, I have it like this at the moment. And so I need to get a, I'm not a big fan of moss poles because personally I know that I'm not going to keep them moist as they should be. I have enough plants to worry about their watering that the thought of watering moss poles, I just know myself. I know it's not going to work out. So I usually will use some kind of like bamboo steak or I'll even do a wood plank that works well for me. So that's the goal and that's what's going to happen with her but in the meantime I just I can't keep up she's so large but I do really enjoy her again if you see that they're yellow like that that's normal that's the beauty of the painted lady I am wild about cacti I live in Indiana so you're like why do you like why do you have this obsession with cacti? I think it's because I don't have it around me. I just want more of it. And so I'm constantly battling the elements to make sure that I'm providing it with enough light that it should be given. And <laughs> so right now a lot of my cacti live outside in their own little beef bar is what I call it because I call cacti beef. Um, but this one was gifted to me from a friend and um, he said it didn't spark him joy anymore, so he sent it to me. And I shared this one in a recent shorts here on YouTube. And so I can't really show the pot like I would like to because that short got kind of demonetized. Somewhat. <laughs> so uh, just know that it is in a... I'll show it to you, but not show it to you. So it's shaped as a bottom. So this is one, one cheek, um, but there is another cheek here on the other side. As far as cactus, I believe it's a Peruvian apple cactus. There is many different kinds that look very similar. So we're gonna go with that. So it's shaped as the backside of the gentleman. And then there is a, a small um, front side of the gentleman in this pot as well. But I enjoy this combination very much. <laughs> Next plant. <laughs> and this last one is an anthurium. So I don't have very many anthuriums because they tend to want higher humidity. I am one to have plants that I know that are going to survive in my home. I'm not going to bring a plant and try and create the perfect environment for it if it's not sustainable, right? So if I have plants that require 
much higher humidity that I'm able to provide. I just won't buy them. I won't suffer <laughs> through that. I've learned by experience that there's no reason for me to do that. There's so many different variations and there's so many plants that I can get that will do well and thrive in my home. I may provide them with the general humidifier that I have in my room, but I'm not about to go do some more extra things to make you happy. You get what you get. And so this is one of those plants that I was uh, initially scared to get because it is an anthurium. This is an anthurium Lux Rad, Rad Lux. It's a Rad, anthurium Rad Lux, yeah. And I actually bought this one last year when I went to visit my friends in New Jersey. And I have my friend who has one of these and she's the same way where she doesn't really have high humidity in her home. So I decided to give it a try. And initially, I didn't like it here. It was just kind of droopy. It gave me a few leaves, but it, it, it was meh, you know? And as time has passed, it has grown so large that leaf that's like old damage this is the first big leaf that it had but there's some old damage from when it was kind of struggling at first and since then it's been giving me some more and this is its newest leaf i love the color i love how it's this color and then it changes to the deep green color so i think it's so it's so beautiful and it's amazing that with time how things can change and how we can heal and be better you know it's very deep <laughs> but anyways I do really enjoy this one and um, yeah she's not giving me any issues anymore I think we're vibing I can appreciate a good vibe <laughs> so I think those are it. Uh, like I said, I want to keep on doing these videos just to show a little bit more of my collection and to maybe introduce you to some new plants that you've never seen before or that you were maybe curious about getting. So I hope you enjoy. If you stuck around, thank you so much. I appreciate you for being here and for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.